Hey guys, it's uh, MJ, the student actuary, and I thought I'd talk to you guys about um, subject CT4, otherwise known as models. I've just written this exam, so I've prepared a little PowerPoint presentation, just giving you an introduction of the various chapters that uh, you'll come across. Essentially, the course is divided into two parts, um, stochastic processes, which is chapter one to six, and survival uh, models, which are the remaining chapters. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get into this wonderful subject. So yeah, the first chapter is called The Principles of Modeling. Um, there's a lot of lists, and you just have to kind of yeah, learn these lists and um, get the theory into your, your head. There are one or two difficult exam questions that require you to apply um, apply these lists to certain scenarios so yeah just make sure you do a little bit of exam practice with regards to those but it is an easy introduction chapter uh, chapter two is called stochastic processes and essentially it's a chapter just about definitions and again very much introductory it will you know introduce what a stochastic process is it will tell you about you know the different state spaces and time uh, sets and all of that stuff. Um, there are some exam questions that might ask for a definition or ask you to give examples, which this chapter contains. But yeah, it's very much a, an introductory chapter. We then have chapter three called Mark of Chains. Um, funnily enough, this can actually account for quite a lot of marks in the paper. I mean, sometimes you can have 25% of the paper consisting of mark of chain questions. Because, um, yeah, you normally get two questions on it, and each question is worth around 12 or 13 marks. Um, there is quite a bit of mathematics in it, but the maths isn't that bad. So, yeah, these should be some, some marks that you should easily get. Then there is chapter four, which is very much a, a foundation chapter for the two chapters coming up. Um, and this is where things do get a little bit difficult. Because when you get to chapter five, it gets hard. Um, this mark of jump processes, it is going to be something that's new to you. Um, you know, these they bring in something called a Kolmogorov um, forward differential equation. And yeah, it, it is difficult to get your head around. You do need to spend a lot of time just letting your mind um, get to grips with this content. Um, this will sometimes count for, for 10. I have seen a one paper that uh, was, I think, 20 marks just for this stuff. Um, but more or likely, it's going to be less than 10 marks in the paper, um, which is good because there is chapter six, which is also a mark of jump, but this time time homogeneous, and it is incredibly difficult. Um, there were some sections of this chapter that I didn't even get my head around when it came to the exam. Um, fortunately, I didn't have to stress too much because in the past there haven't been many uh, questions on this chapter, and in my test, there I don't actually think there was. There was maybe some indirect uh, testing with regards to it, but nothing too major. So I was lucky. You might not be that lucky, so spend time on it. Um, it really is a, yeah, something that you haven't come across. This chapter, if you can't do it, don't worry. It's not that you're stupid. Um, I, I think only geniuses can do it, but yeah, it is very difficult. The good news is that chapter 7 and the remaining chapters are much more easier than, than those chapters. Um, survival models um, very much just yeah, introduces, yeah, we're back to an introduction phase where it just tells you, um, you know, about the things that are coming up. Um, and the first thing that comes up is this thing known as estimating the lifetime distribution function. You're going to use something called Kaplan Mayer and Nelson Aylin. And essentially, you're going to be calculating the lifetime distribution of mice or little creatures or insects or, or various things. And um, this is what we call non-parametric um, distributions. And it's quite a fun chapter. It's actually a very easy chapter. 
Well, I found it very easy and I might release a few more videos with regards to the content in this chapter because I did enjoy it. And there are quite a lot of marks in the test with this. Chapter 9 is, it used to be called Cox Models, but now they've changed it to Proportional Hazard Models. And essentially, it is just a chapter about comparing um, yeah, oranges and apples. Um, you have your baseline hazard, and that falls away, and you've formed, left with this, yeah, the, the rest of the, the model, which you can therefore compare throughout time. It's not that difficult. It does use a little, well, it requires you to know a little bit of uh, knowledge with regards to vectors and, and that type of mathematics, but it is quite a, an easy chapter. Not always tested, but when it is tested, you can get, you know, some nine easy marks here. Okay, chapter 10, binomial and Poisson models, very much um, a theory chapter. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it's, it the first time I actually got quite stuck on this chapter, um, because when you study it, you must realize that the binomial model is inferior and it is um, what actuaries used to use in the past. They don't use it anymore today unless they, unless it's under certain you know situations where they don't have um, all the relevant data. But you must realize that the Poisson model is a weak model. Otherwise, you're going to go through this material and being like you're going to get confused. So you must realize binomial has its flaws. Poisson is better, and that it's also very much an approximation for those mark of jump processes which you did earlier on in the course. Um, don't get too bogged down here. I mean, again, they don't really test you directly on this stuff. But understanding this chapter makes the next chapter very easy to understand. Because the next chapter is called Exposed to Risk. Now, I'm going to talk about why I've got a picture of a shark there in a second. Um, but this chapter used to give me lots of problems because I didn't understand chapter 10. Once you get your head around chapter 10, this chapter becomes incredibly easy. And it is sometimes worth quite a bit of marks in the test. Um, it does introduce a lot of demography and population studies and some strange concepts. But get your head around it and you'll see that the mathematics are very easy. And once you understand this chapter... When people come to you and they say, oh, um, it's more dangerous to, you know, drive a car than to surf in waters that, you know, are known for sharks, you know, and they give you some whole statistics of how, you know, more people die on the, the road and how you're more likely to die in a car crash, you can say, yes, yes, that statement is true, but it is because of this thing known as exposed to risk. And if you take this exposed to risk factor into consideration, then you'll find that even though you're more likely to die in a car and get eaten by a shark, it is more dangerous to surf in shark waters than to drive a car. Um, so yeah, it's a very, it's a nice um, arguing tool that you can use against people who throw stats at you. Um, next up, we have a graduation tests. This chapter is essentially about testing the smoothness and how well um, you graduate your data. Basically, graduation is fitting a smooth curve through some uh, crude data points. Um, I won't go into too much here, but this chapter, again, it's very easy if you have done subject CT3 or if you are comfortable with statistics and hypothesis testing and, you know, chi-square distribution and, and all of those things. Um, if you haven't, you might battle with this test, uh, I mean this chapter mathematically, but it is a very easy chapter. Then final, finally, you have methods of graduation. Um, this just talks about, you know, graduating using a parametric formula, using a standard table, or using the graphing method. Um, it's theory that helps explain chapter 12. I don't know why they've got it after chapter, thir uh, after chapter 12. It should be before, in my opinion. Um, yeah, just a little bit of theory. Very easy to learn. It's Normally they'll ask a question that the bulk is about chapter 12, but there will be a few marks on asking, answering a theory question with regards to chapter 13. 
and yeah, that's that's it. This entire um, subject, in a sense, is about Mew. Um, not Mew, the the cute Pokemon that we all love, but Mew as in the the Greek letter, which represents the the force of mortality. Once you get the understanding that every single chapter in this um, in this whole course is about Mew, is about the force of mortality, either directly or indirectly, you will understand the, the material much better. Because first time you, you read through it, and you're going to think that every chapter is on its own different topic, and you think that everything is separate and different. Once you understand that Mew is what it's all about, and some remember, Mew can be called... Um, the force of mortality, it can be called transition rates, it can be called hazard uh, models, and all that stuff. And because it's been given all these different names, you sometimes lose the fact that the entire subject is about Mu. But yeah, that is subject CT4. Um, I've just recently written it, so it's all fresh in my mind. So if you want me to make a video on any of the topics within it, put a little comment below. But um, yeah, I might make some videos um, if you guys come up with some cool suggestions. Anyway, cheers, and remember that there might be three methods of graduation, but there's only one method to pass, and that is to study hard. Cheers, guys.